As you may or may not know, RuneScape is enormous. Now this is due to a lot of reasons really, but there are two that I just wanted to bring up right now. One is that RuneScape is written in RuneScript, which is a language specifically developed so that it is easy to add content into the game, including, you know, graphics and all of that. The second is that it's 18 years old. If you take the time from 2001 to 2007, which is when the backup was, and 2013 to present, that's just about 18 years. That's a long time for an MMO to develop, and it has. So obviously we're all familiar with some of the great quests we have, all the great activities in the game, but some of this stuff isn't tied to any content that you might experience in your day-to-day -day adventures around RuneScape. So what I'd like to take a look at today is some of the NPCs that were put into the game that have no ties to quests or clues or activities or diaries. They're just kind of there. Some of them have some weird dialogue. Some of them hint at some content that might come in the future or content that was never added. But I think we can get some explanations for a few of them. And some of them we can just point and laugh at and go, <laughs> you don't matter, which that can be fun too. Anyway. Without further ado, let's go to our first location, which is Falador. So this first NPC is in a place I didn't actually know existed until I started making this video. Uh, there is an entrance to Death's Domain in Falador, which makes sense, it's a respawn point, but it uh, if you, you can only get to it by entering this crypt that has an entrance that I had never seen in the White Knight's courtyard, and anyway, you get on there, there's the portal to Death's Domain and a single squire sweeping and just depressed in a corner and most people wouldn't talk to him because I wouldn't want to talk to some depressed guy standing in the corner. Um, but there he is. And if you do chat with him, he just talks about how he's sad. He's not going to be promoted to being a knight anytime soon. And he just wants to not sweep and kill things instead. Which, sure, yeah, I haven't swept at all in this game. And it's been great. So uh, we're talking to him. And he brings up that he wants to talk to his master and see if he can you know, become a knight anytime soon. And, you know, you're like, well, why don't you do that? And he says, well, my master's watching the Imperial Guard and Berthorp. I'm like, <laughs> excuse me? He's doing what now? And then he gets, you know, all nervous. He's like, oh, I've said too much, which, yeah, he's not getting promoted because he's way too quick to share secrets with random people. Uh, but, yeah, that's our first clue that the uh, the White Knights are planning some shit in Berthorp. And this is corroborated by some of the people that you can find in Berthorp. Now, Berthorp is the center for a lot of the troll quests, as we discovered in the last episode of Worse Than Slot. And if you've completed them, a lot of the townspeople just kind of say, Hey, thanks, man. You're a cool dude. Uh, and that's all well and good. But some of them, including Penda and Brioka, will just kind of hint that they're nervous about the White Knights. And they won't give you any explanation. They'll just kind of be like, Hey, the White Knights are going to come slaughter us. And you're like, what? And they say, what? Oh, thanks for your help. That's all we get. But we get no explanation. None of the higher-ups will talk about it, and you just kind of have this White Knight Imperial Guard tension. Uh, so maybe we'll get a quest on that. Maybe it's just kind of there, but yeah, thought that was worth bringing up. Now, speaking of Berthorp, there are some soldiers there. I know, I know, it's wild. I'm the first person to tell you this, but it's gonna be okay. Anyway, uh, most of these soldiers are too busy to speak to you apparently, but there are some that you can talk to, but they will only speak to you in Latin for reasons. Uh, now, what I decided to do is go through a bunch of these dialogues and translate them for your information. So we get some funny ones. We get uh, your pants are open, classic. We get uh, eat my shorts, Simpsons reference, very nice. However, they get a little more cryptic. Um, we get uh, do not call me, I will call you which, you know, not that cryptic, but it leaves some you know, questions unanswered. We get, don't you dare destroy my rigid world. No idea. Now, all right, these are direct translations, so I'm sure, that, you know, the words are a little off, but still weird. We have, the muse of the wise is fixed in the ear. Important words. And finally, we get, I don't want a bread oven. So whatever you do, do not give Berthorpe soldiers bread ovens. They will be furious. Under no circumstances are you to give them bread ovens. So why are they saying these things in Latin? Well, I have half the answer. Apparently, there are two books by Henry Beard. There's a 1990 book called Latin for All Occasions and a 1991 book called Latin for Even More Occasions. A lot of these quotes are directly pulled from that book. Now, 
sure, that's great. However, this book is actually just a series of quotes translated from English into Latin directly. So someone still had to say the muse of the wise is fixed in the ear and I don't want a bread oven. Put those as common phrases into a book that was then published. Not, not sure what's going on there, but there, there you go. Um, anyway, that's enough Latin for now. Let's move on. Next up, we are going to Varrock. If you travel to the top of the Varrock Palace, you will notice a bunch of recruits being trained by a guard captain. This captain will kind of pace around the place, just shouting things like, you know, you're useless, utterly useless, and you make me so furious, and like, I'm having a heart attack, please take me to the hospital, oh God, things like that, you know. Anyway, you talk to him and you have a few options. Uh, one, you can ask him what he's doing and he'll say, I'm training this useless group because he's a great guy. Um, but if you tell them, yeah, oh, for sure, they look super weak. He'll be like, you're a bastard and I want you to shut your mouth. It's kind of that kind of, you know, only I can call my brother stupid energy. But if on the other hand, you tell him they look very fit, he will call you like blind and an idiot and be like, no, these things are just worthless. What are you talking about? Anyway, you can't win with him, but what you can do is ask him for some guard armor and he will just kind of go into this tirade about how only guards can have guard armor, which sure, I get that. You can ask to be a member of the Varrock Guard in that case. And he will say, oh, well, why would you want to do that? And you know, are you aware that the average lifespan of a guard is about 30 minutes? And if you say, you know, that doesn't bother me at all, he will say, ha, you have failed the intelligence test. You're not allowed to be a guard. And then the conversation will end. And that's the captain. I hope you like him. I, I did. He was nice. Are you like me? Were you completely unaware that there was a salon in Varrock? Yeah. Okay. So they added a salon in Varrock in uh, April of 2023. And with that, they added Emma and Susie. Emma is the hairdresser. Susie is her sister. Uh, something I wanted to bring up is that apparently the hair salon in Varrock was deleted on the 7th of June and then reintroduced on the 14th of June. So there was just a week where the hair salon, like the new hair salon just went out of business. But apparently there's some kind of, I don't know, government bailout from Varrock and they're fine now. But yeah, they're back anyway. So if you talk to Susie, she'll just kind of mumble at you and just kind of go, fuck off. That kind of thing. Um, and apparently her sister chalks it up to her being shy, but I'm kind of introverted myself and I just don't mumble at people that much. So I don't trust her. And I think there's a grandmaster quest where Susie is the boss. Keep an eye out on her. Anyway, they have a pet parrot called Rio and that's kind of cute. So uh, yeah, there's Susie. Go say hi and she will hate it. The Varrock Museum sure is a place. If you go to the very top, which is kind of annoying because you have to walk through all the exhibitions and like through all the displays and whatnot, but you can get to the very top. Uh, there isn't much up there apart from an art critic. Now, if you, you know, after you've helped on our thing from the dig site, more stuff gets put on display up there. But the main thing is a big ass painting of King Lathus from Ardune and this guy, art critic Jacques. You can talk to him. He has no idea what's going on. He is not involved in any museum quests, not involved in kudos or anything. He doesn't give you anything, but he does reference some French poetry. <laughs> um, he uh, apparently references La Butte, which is a sonnet from Charles Baudelaire that he published in his book, Les Fleurs du Mal, or The Flowers of Evil. And the entire time he's standing next to this portrait of King Lathis, which is just beautiful. But let's read an excerpt that was uh, translated into English. I am as lovely as a dream in stone, and this, my heart, where each finds death in turn, inspires the poet with a love as lone, as clay eternal, and as taciturn. This being applied to this goofy-ass portrait of this evil-ass king is my favorite. Now, I looked into uh, Charles Baudelaire a little bit just to see if there was any connection. Um, he was just kind of a poet. He was a, a, apparently known as a dandy and a free spender. Uh, he died of opium abuse and alcoholism, so there's that. And his book, Le Fleur du Mal, was you know a collection of all of his poems, but it was very decadent and referenced a lot of eroticism. And apparently six of the poems were even censored because they were so immoral. So I don't know what King Latus is getting up to, but I think that guy parties. 
Um, also, apparently, if you're into anime or manga at all, apparently Aku no Hana was inspired directly from this, so um, there you go. Anyway, uh, French poetry tangent over, let's move on. Here in Remington, there are two NPCs that are critical. Not because they have anything to do with anything. They don't. Don't get me wrong. I guess their kids were part of the 2018 Halloween event, but these two, they're just here as money makers. That's right. You talk to them, and after about a 10 second dialogue, you will receive up to three GP. Now, I did some calculations here. If we're assuming we're getting an average of two GP per dialogue, and each dialogue takes roughly 10 seconds to complete, that means you're getting 360 dialogues per hour with an average of 720 GP per hour. Soup, hit me up. I have got this new money maker for you. Just let me know and we'll talk. Just down the road in Port Sarum, we've got some gaslighting to do. When you go through the diary and you get the security book from the guard that's on the top floor of the jail, uh, you can actually go one floor higher and there is a guard on the rooftop and you can just pretend that you don't exist and he will start believing you. He'll say, ooh, you've been out in the sun too long. And he'll just say, I, I have I? What? And you just continue to convince him that you are not actually present. You will have an existential crisis and the game will advise you to leave him alone. And that's great. So if you need to just go manipulate someone real quick, he's your guy. Now staying in Port Sarum, we can go down to the inn. Just outside the inn is where you would start the pirate's treasure quest. But if you go in, there is a man named Ahab. Apparently, he's caught the white whale. He's chilling. He is good. He's drinking his beer. In fact, his beer is called Ahab's beer. Anyway, you talk to him and he will ask you for a free ship. And you will mention, uh, well, you have I have the Lady Lumbridge, but you know you want to give me two thousand coins. And he says, I don't have any money. Just give me free stuff. And you will say, No. And they'll be all upset. And if you try to take his beer, he'll get mad at you. And if you try to telegraph his beer, he'll get madder at you. So just a lovely guy. He's there if you want to talk to him. Now we head to the city of unused content. Shazian. Shazian used to just be a city in the middle of Great Koran that was just a military camp. Yeah, I use city very loosely. It was just a camp with some soldiers and a bunch of people who were wounded, and every time you gave them a bandage, they would cry that they still weren't healed, and you would give them more and more bandages, and you would still not have enough favor, and there was more bandages, but the favor's, favor's gone. It's okay. Favor's gone. We can move on. Um, so yeah, Shazian. Shazian's a real city now, and it's actually really pretty. Honestly, I love that the devs have given it an identity. It's a super cool city, and I hope we do stuff with it. Right now, all it's there for is buying graceful recolors. Uh, so there's that. But there are a bunch of NPCs that roam this city. The first thing that sprung to my mind when I was making this video was new recruit Tony. He is this soldier that stands in the back of Shazian and just tells you, I don't want to go back to the military. They are mean. They make me do push-ups and he's all upset. Uh, but he's actually a solution to an anagram clue. So he is not part of this video, even though I mentioned him. So he is part of this video. And fuck. All right, all right, all right. Now we can talk about someone who actually has nothing to do with anything. His name is Elijah. He's a gardener on the westmost part of Shazian. And he is a bit odd because you will talk to him and unlike other gardeners who will, you know, either give you farming tips or sell you overpriced farming equipment, he just kind of is odd because he'll say, what do you want from me? Leave me alone. And you'll say, oh, I just, you know, kind of wanted some gardening tips or stuff. And he says, I'm not that kind of gardener. Leave me alone. Now, we can take this in one of two ways. We can take this the boring way in that he is not the gardener that wants to help people and is just kind of tending to his own crops. I reject that because there's a more interesting option in that he is gardening something so secret that we can't know about it. Like he is harvesting an herb that will give you unlimited run energy, restore all your prayer, one shot Zuck, you know, defense against all PKers. It's just the best herb ever. And we're not allowed to know about it. I, I'm suspicious of Elijah, so keep an eye on him. Let's see if he does anything. Now we go to the top of one of the war tents in Shazian, and we talk to Sergeant Ricardo. It's him. There he is. He's just a jolly guy who likes the military. He's proud to be in it, and that's all well and good. But you can ask him about the military's weaknesses, and you say, wow, so the Shazian military is, like, super strong. Are there any weaknesses? 
And for some reason, he says, yeah, I mean, we're not really magicians. That's kind of Arceus' thing, but they don't really like fighting people, and so we don't get to use their magic. But yeah, apart from that, we're, we're solid. We're set. And you're like, wow, no weaknesses apart from magic. And he's like, well, I mean, we didn't mention the water. And you're like, the water? And he says, yeah, it's, you know, poor Piscarillus. They're supposed to be the water people, but they also don't like fighting, and they don't want to make a navy. And so we're like, that's cool. Let's let, let us make a navy. And they're like, no, it's unbalanced. And you're like, okay, so they're not allowed to have a navy because they don't want to fight. We're not allowed to have a navy because they're not allowed to have a navy because they don't want to fight. And then he just kind of is confused, but he's still proud. And that's important. Now, the next character, like, isn't that interesting on his own, but there's something interesting about him, which I guess makes him interesting. I don't know. Anyway, it's the old man. If you go to Shazian, there is an old man that stands outside the monument. Hello. <laughs> there is an old man that stands outside the monument and just kind of reflects on what it was like being a soldier and serving his country, which is all well and good, but your character just kind of goes, neat, and moves on. Bye. And if you look him up on the wiki, he doesn't exist. And that's odd. Because if you're not familiar, the wiki for RuneScape is incredible. It is filled with all the information you could want, and serious players of old school RuneScape rely heavily on it because of the sheer amount of information it has. The fact that he's not in it is a little weird, because if you look up Old Man, you get redirected to the page about the Old Man in Port Phasmatis, or I guess just outside of Port Phasmatis, uh, that's involved in the Ghost of Holy Quest. You can be taken to a disambiguation page, but he is not on it. You get the strange old man, you get the odd old man, but not him. So on its own, that's not that crazy. He's not involved in any quests, he's not involved in any clues, anything like that. So, you know, why should he have his own wiki page? The only reason I bring it up is because everyone else I've talked about in this video so far does have a wiki page. So the fact that he doesn't is just mildly interesting. So there you go, mildly interesting. The next character I want to bring up is the Gravedigger. He is a ghost guy and he stands outside of Shazian. And if you talk to him, he has some basic dialogue. Just you tell him to look on the bright side of life and he says, I physically cannot do that. You say, yeah, I'm an idiot, and you walk away, and that's all good. But if you bring Khadez's memoirs to him, he will unlock a little bit more dialogue. So, turns out he remembers three things from when he dies. A man speaking loudly, a woman's voice that could have been the wind, and a loud metallic clanging noise. And that's it. We, we have no idea what this relates to, but his name is Sander, and he stands by his grave, and he has no idea what's going on. So hidden content maybe or just he stands there to make you think something's going on anyway there he is i'd like to talk about who i think is the most perplexing npc in this video his name is kinnear and he stands in the catacombs of Karand between the hellhounds and the brutal blue dragons you can talk to him and he has some special dialogue which uh, i'll read out here he starts with it was the book that told me to come here. To which you say, What book? And he replies, Circles within trees it is, and hopping too. Okay, are you okay? I'll find the light. That will see me through. Okay, I'm gonna go now. Jelly shards in the dark. And that is the extent of the conversation. Now, he was added almost eight years ago in june of 2016 that's a long time for him to exist for no reason and be that not okay <laughs> what makes him even more perplexing is you can also find him in crux dungeon in an inaccessible part of the cave so he's just kind of standing there watching you he is unsettling to me and i uh do not have any answers for you he's just a man and he's not okay <laughs> Let's head back to the surface. Just above the main entrance to the Catacombs of Karen stands Kingstown. And in Kingstown, there is a park, and in that park, there are three musicians. They don't have much to say, but they are all references to different fantasy books. I apologize if I butcher these names. I haven't read these particular books, but Reshi is a reference to Quotha, which is from the Kingkiller Chronicles by Patrick Rothfuss. Kendall is a character of the same name in The Demon Cycle by Peter V. Brett. And Thomdrill is a reference to Thomdrill Marilyn in The Wheel of Time by uh, Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson. I think this is cool. Like, yeah, they don't have any real content to go off of, but I like little references like this, especially when they're nerdy things like that. So, 
Good job, Jagex. And so from one side of the world to the other, we're going to go check out the very eastern side of the map at Sleep. It's a city in Mauritania. Uh, so Sleep, as you may have known, if you've seen Swapletics, is a city that was filled with people who have dialogue that goes nowhere, who didn't seem to be related to any quests, which would be perfect for this video. However, that has changed since the release of Sins of the Father, since the Nightmare of Ashihama, since Night of the Theater. There's a lot more to do in Sleep now. However, not everything has a point. So, if you go and talk to the people in the houses, they're all names, but if you talk to them, they just say they don't want any of what you're selling, and they say, fuck off, and you'll have to. But, if you go to the very eastern part of the city, there is a bar. In that bar, there are three patrons who are a direct reference to How I Met Your Mother, because their names are Theodore, Marshall, and Barney backwards. Very, very hidden, very subtle. <laughs> Uh, if you have completed Sins of the Father, you will be greeted with the bartender, Roy. However, if you have not, his name is Carl. Again, the name of the bartender in How I Met Your Mother. So, there you go. A little sitcom reference for you. I think we gotta talk about Ed. Ed is a man that you can find in one of two places based on whether or not you have completed Song of the Elves. If you have not, he chills by the unmarked grave near Wintertot, which, what a place to chill. But. He is there digging, and he says he is looking for the helm for the Clue Hunter outfit. Clue Hunter outfit was released in 2016 with the Crack the Clue event, and you'd think that he was there to tell players where to dig. No, he is digging in the completely the wrong spot, because the right way to get the helm is by digging near the clock tower, not near Wintertot. So no idea what he's doing there. But if you have completed Song of the Elves, you'll find him in Miniv, which is a mountain just north of Prifthanus, also looking for a helmet. This time is the ornate helm, which was part of the second Crack the Clue event. Again, he is digging in the wrong place because the way to get it is by performing a series of emotes near Varrock. So I don't know why this man is so headwear impaired, but he's apparently a reference to Mod Ed. And I would love to know if Ed just has an issue with hats, because that would explain a lot. But yeah, that's Ed. Go check him out. And that is going to wrap up our exploration for now. There is a lot more here. There is more that I have found, and I am 100% certain there is more that I have not found. But, unless I wanted this video to take forever and be unpleasantly long, we're not going to do it in a single session. So, if you enjoyed this, let me know and I will continue making videos on the topic. Uh, otherwise, if you have not yet seen my Iron Man series, where I try to kill every boss in the game using no good weapons, uh, check out Worth and Slot. But I will see you next time with a worse than slot video, and I hope you take care.